Good morning. I'm noticing this beautiful altar, and I think we, we're, this community, we're definitely going places. We are definitely moving from one place to another because we have like five sets of keys, which is fantastic. So here we are in February. Yay! February! And as usual, I've asked Spirit about what am I supposed to share today. And I've been noticing that I have been looking back on my life. That's what happens when you get older. You start looking back, too. <laughs> and I was thinking there's a distinct difference in my life between when I had spirit, when I have spirit in my life, and when I didn't have spirit in my life. And I don't know about you guys, but when I didn't, let me be very, very precise. I did have spirit in my life from the moment, from forever. Was I aware that I had spirit in my life? No, for decades, I had no idea. I, had, I understood there was a concept, right? We understand concepts, but I didn't have it in at all. And I look at that time in my life and I realize how absolutely, um, unhealthy and unhappy and just painful it was to live like that. Um, hated, 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 hated being in my own skin. God, I hated being in my own skin. I just thought I was just, you know, you know how you look around and you see people and you think, she's prettier than I am. He's smarter than I am. They're more successful than I am. You can go on and on and on. And that's, that's how, you know, I, I grew up. I mean, that's like in my, you know, that's in the cells. It's in the memories. And um, it was always so hard. Like, everything was just so hard. Everything growing up sucked. Was that just me? Or did, do you guys have a sucky childhood sometimes, too? I have a 12 and a half year old. And I remember being 12 and a half. And it was horrific. Seventh grade, they all turn into, that they don't all, but a lot of them turn into total. <laughs> Fill in the blank, you know what I'm talking about. And I remember living that and feeling just so, every day was kind of, you know, just, you just kept kind of adding on to the pain. And growing up, you know, getting, growing into adulthood, it was the same thing. It was chasing after stuff all the time and, you know, trying to make it, trying to survive, trying to pay your bills, trying to find somebody who will love you, who you love back, who you think you deserve, who, you know, you convince yourself that they couldn't possibly love you, so you just go home and eat, you know, a large Domino's pizza. And a two liter soda, yeah. That's the kind of stuff that it was when I didn't have spirit in my life. And so I'm thinking about this and I go, okay, now what's my life now? Well, my life now is not you know, perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm a lot happier and I hope I'm a better person. Like I really, really hope because I found, because I woke up to spirit that I'm a better person. Like I hope I'm not quite as much of a dink as I was back then. But I know I'm a happier person. I know I'm a happier person. So here I am sitting in this chair and in front of these beautiful things. And my job, what the space I hold, is to try to help you in your path, somehow, some way. So I think about, of course, you know, it, it always presents itself in real life Technicolor. I think, okay, how, how can we together find ways that we can bring in spirit into our lives and be happier and be more fulfilled and, and use the time, right? How many of you have had anybody die in your life that's important to you? Pretty much everybody. And so you know that this is temporary. There's gonna be a day when you do not wake up. Happy Sunday! But it's true, but it's true. 
And so, what is our objective? What is our objective? It's to use the days where we do wake up as smartly and as powerfully and as lovingly as we possibly can. I just, I, I, one of the things about me that I hate the most and I'm trying to purge out is victimhood. I just hate it in everybody else and I really hate it in myself. When I get, when I'm the ugliest, ugliest outside and ugliest inside is when I'm a victim. When I'm all about, oh God, I have to, I hate this, why can't I? It's just so horrible to choose to waste time like that. Because we have but a finite amount. So I look at my life and I look at all the reasons and all the ways I do, in fact, become a victim. <laughs> and this week presented itself with an opportunity for me to grow. So, you guys ever get totally righteous about how, how right you are and how wrong the other person is? And how you know, you know that you are right. Like fact. Okay, you know, everybody goes like, there's two sides of every story. No, you know you're right. So I was in one of those rare situations where there wasn't two sides of every story, there was mine. And it was right. And I had a lot of anger at this person. Justifiable, in my opinion. And could rattle off laundry list. Because, you know, that's when our brains really kick in is when it gets into justification mode of our own victimhood. Then we turn into freaking Einstein. It's like, oh, really? Well, what about this and this and this? And then two years ago, you did that. And about 14 months ago, you did this. Da -da 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 -da, I recall. So there I am, and I, I'm having this agitation with this person. And <laughs> this is a victim-free zone, by the way. <laughs> so if you feel kind of victim-y, you might want to go outside and get some air. So there I am, and I'm not letting it go. I'm not letting it go, I'm not letting it go, I'm not letting it go. And it's burning in me. It's, it's just... You know, it's not huge. It's not like it's, you know, life altering. It's just a knit. And sometimes knits are the things that are the worst, right? Because if it's a big hairy project or a big, big nasty issue, and you get in there and you waste a bunch of time on it, then it almost feels justified because it's a big issue. But how many of us have little issues that piss us off? Little things that bother us, little things that aren't the way we want them to be, and we, we give hours and hours and hours of our life to it in the background sometimes, and then it comes in the foreground. And for me, when it comes to the foreground is when I'm sleeping or trying to, when I'm laying in a bed. And two nights ago, this is what happened. So I'm laying in bed, and do you all have those conversations where you, you, you have the, the fantasy conversation? Where you say your piece over and over and over again, you practice it, you perfect it, you polish it, Here's what I'd say here, and then 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 here's what I'd say, and then here, and then here, and then here. Just in case you forgot the first part that you were ranting about, you want to get back and reinforce it. Well, that's the kind of night I was having. That's the kind of early morning I was having. And it was 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was wide awake. Wide awake. So what do I do? Wake my husband up, of course. Are you sleeping? Honey, honey, are you sleeping? What is it, what is it, what is it? I can't sleep. Okay, so he knows when he hears I can't sleep, that means he's not gonna sleep. So he gets up and he looks, you know, says, what's going on? Oh, that's all I needed to hear, what's going on? Are you kidding me? I've just been obsessing over this stuff for two hours. It wasn't him. It wasn't him that I was angry at this time. I go on and on and on and on. And he's listening and he says, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, you know, of course it's dangerous waters for him, right? He's, he's got to navigate carefully. He's kind of like, I want to support her, but I don't want her to keep going because I need to get up in the morning. How do I get, extricate myself from her freak out? 
So he's listening, holding space, you know, all that stuff. And he says to me, honey, well, maybe one of the things that could help you is, you know, you could forgive this person. What? Yeah, right, I know, yeah, yeah, right. So here I am, this is, you know, my job, to be kind of, a, you know, paying attention. Yeah, right, forgiveness. But, and so I'm laying there, forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. I don't, I don't want to forgive her. I don't want to forgive her right now. Because of all the reasons. And here's what I want to share with you. When my walk is, maybe you've evolved beyond it, it's very possible. What, what, my, what my walk is, is sometimes I am in a place to forgive. Sometimes I can get, grow my heart big and beautiful. And if somebody slights me, I can see beyond their stupid, idiotic choices, and I can see the person behind it, and I can see the wound behind the person, and I can see the disconnection behind the wound behind the person behind the bad choice. Sometimes I can do that. And I can, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. I forgive you. And sometimes I can't. Is this for any of you guys either? Sometimes you just can't. You can talk it. You can say you forgive them. But let's be honest. So there I was, wide awake, trying to forgive this person. And I realized full on, I would either fake it and still obsess over it all night, or I was gonna do something different that was gonna help me out of the process. And here's what I realized. Our relationship with the divine is the most important thing that we can do to change our lives. Because in that scenario, I asked spirit not to help me forgive her directly. What I did is I just wanted to go to sleep. I just wanted to sleep. So I thought, okay, what do I, what do I need here? What, what will help me? And I realized I, I kind of went inward. Because when you're angry at somebody, or when you're disappointed with somebody, or when you're disappointed with a situation, or when you're depressed about a situation, or anything at all that's outside of your own experience, what you do is you're always looking out, right? You're looking at your employer, you're looking at your partner, you're looking at your son, you're looking at your neighbor, you're looking at your girlfriend, you're looking out at that person. You're looking at the government. You're looking at the weather. I look at my stupid thing in my car this morning, negative nine, and I just wanted to boom, boom, boom. I'm tired of it! And I, I externalized my experience on the number that I saw, right? We all look out. The way that I got through that dark time in the middle of the night was to go in. And I went, okay, so you've, you've beat the horse dead as to why this person was wrong. And somehow you can just feel justified in that you're the smartest woman in the room. So with all that being said, go in and look at yourself and go, if my feeling towards this person were a color, what would it be? It's like a burnt orange red. Hot. And where is it? It's right, it's kind of right here. It's certainly not in my heart. It's kind of here and here. <laughs> so I'm, okay. So where, yeah, that's, that's definitely her, yep, mm-hmm. Okay, so then I go, all right. Now, do you wanna go the rest of the night with the orange, red, hot? Or do you want something different? You want something different, okay. So all I did was just release the idea of forgiving her, because I knew it was failed exercise. And I just laid there and I asked spirit for help. And I said, please take this away from me. Just take it away from me. 
and replace it with a nice emerald green, soft, gentle, loving, soothing, kind of Vicks vapor rubby, awesome, of peace. Please give me that spirit. And I just imagined that this fire hot red orange just started to leave me. It just started to leave my cells. It started to leave my, my throat. It started to leave my thoughts. And I, I just kept it's almost, it was like a cosmic vacuum cleaner. Just take it up, 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 take it up. Because she's not feeling the pain at three o'clock in the morning, I promise you. She's probably sleeping peacefully. It was the only me that I felt it, and my poor husband. So I let all that orange red out, and I said, Spirit, just fill back up again with peace. It doesn't, I don't have to be the perfect person. Just soothe me right now. And it, it did. And it brought that emerald green goodness to me. And then I fell asleep. And then I fell asleep. And then, of course, the next day, I wasn't so angry. And then I wasn't quite so, you know, sanctimonious and righteous. And, and then I could look at her and go, wow, yeah, okay. I see this. My anger dissipated enough where I could see it. So here's the thing. I have, these are my glasses that, you know, I've worn glasses forever. And I spend like an ungodly amount of money on my glasses so they don't look like Coke bottles. Because I have terrible, terrible eyesight. In fact, in the, when I go work out and I take my glasses off to go you know, to, the, to, to the shower or whatever, I not only can't see, but I can't hear either. Does anybody with bad eyes know that once you take your glasses off, you just, you just can't hear? Somebody talks to you, you don't, I, I don't know, I don't know. Anger is the same way. Or any, any emotion that isn't really you. Any emotion that isn't spirit is like not wearing the glasses and you can't see anything. You can't see the other person to forgive the other person. You just can't. But then if you can let spirit help you through that, then you can start to see them clearly. And we can do that with other things in our lives. So what are the other things that we struggle with? What are some of the things, if anybody is brave enough or bold enough, to share with me a topic. You don't have to tell me your story. What, what's something that anybody struggles with? You could just yell it out. Yeah. Guilt. Guilt is actually, in my view, sometimes okay to have. If you feel badly about something that you've done that's bad, that hurts somebody, Guilt is a reminder that said, hmm, that was a choice you made and that hurt somebody. That is a, it's a reflective device. Perpetual guilt, on the other hand, is not. Perpetual guilt is something that can keep you small and keep you diminished and keep you disconnected from people. And most times what guilt will then transmute into is shame. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of what I've done. I'm ashamed of who I am. I'm ashamed of blah, blah, blah. When you can see that and go, okay, maybe I'm not gonna be able to step fully into this, fully into I release my guilt or I release my shame, because it's too, you, you don't have your glasses on, you can't hear, but you can ask. That's the thing, that's the thing that's so important for us. When we start growing up and we have these ideas, we have these concepts of spirituality or concepts of religion, and it all becomes this external thing, that idea that becomes foreign, that we don't really understand, it, A, has a ton of fear around it, ton of judgment around it. Anybody grow up in, a, in an environment where God would punish you if you did naughties? some of which are completely normal and natural naughties. So you grew up with this idea that that thing, that thing, that man, that entity is not something you want to mess with, right? You don't want to mess with it. You just kind of want to just, 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 could you just pretend that I'm not here? Just pretend, just look somewhere else. There's all these other people that are so much worse than me. Just focus on them. Let me go do my naughties over here and don't pay attention to me. 
That's what we grew up with, was this idea that spirit or God or whatever you want to call it was almost not something that we wanted to necessarily engage with. But the reality is for us to walk in truth, walk in peace, walk in prosperity, anybody dealing with money issues? I am. Yeah, right. It's just a teensy weensy bit. You could all deal with a titch more money. Okay, well, that's another issue that you can look at it to say, how, how can I utilize this partner? How can I connect with this partner? How can I have this partner help me, serve me, support me, guide me, point me in the right direction? That's the key. That's what I want to bring and help you with, is to try to reestablish or strengthen that relationship with the divine so on Monday morning when you need it and Tuesday afternoon when you need it and Thursday morning and all those times in between, you have something to connect to that's going to help you when you can't do it yourself. That is the goal, in my view. So we look at anything that is less than what we have, guilt, money, relationship. Anybody want a relationship and they don't have it? Or not the relationship you want? All those things that we have that are our wants, our desires, instead of us, because sometimes when it, when it seems like it's this big, hairy issue that we have, that we, we, we almost kind of kick in and go, we can't do that. We don't have the ability to do that. I don't have enough strength or X, Y, or Z to do that. That's what I feel sometimes. I don't know about you guys, but I really do feel sometimes like I do not have this. I do not have what it takes to live the life that I want to live. I don't have enough strength. I don't have enough perseverance. I don't have enough discipline. I don't have enough will. I don't have enough desire, I don't have enough X, Y, or Z. I could tell you all day long about why I can't get done what I want to get done. <laughs> but that's not the kind of life that I want to live. I want to live the one where I'm at maximum. I'm at 11. <laughs> that's the kind of life I want to live. And that's the kind of life spirit wants me to live. And that's the kind of life spirit wants you to live. Spirit doesn't want you to live at two. Or at three, numbing yourself out with the real hoarding housewives. Spirit doesn't want you to have this, you know, pile of dreams that you never go after. It wants you to be at 11. It wants you to make a difference in your own life and in the life of the people in your orbit. That's what it wants. So when you're in the place where you go, I don't, I just can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Good. Don't. Don't. Give yourself permission to be the one that's powerless. Give yourself permission to be the one that doesn't know you're back in from a hole in the ground. Let yourself be totally and utterly clueless. And then surrender. Help. Help. Please, help. Help me to figure out, A, why I don't have the relationship or the money or the peace of mind. Tell me, show me, give me some insights, knock on my head, give me some pictures. You know, spirit, when, when I first started learning about this kind of stuff, because I was completely and utterly so totally clueless about God, zero, knew nothing. The way that I started to learn about it was I imagined it. I imagined God. What would that be like? What would that feel like? What would that be like if there was a presence there that really did love me unconditionally? And I could feel it as I imagined it. And then pretty soon, my imagination, I realized, wasn't really my imagination. It was real. It was really happening. So with you stepping into this place for yourself, you are at a cusp in your life. Every last one of you is at a turning point in your life. You would not be here at a negative nine degree Sunday morning in February unless you were at a turning point. You'd be in bed nursing a hangover. So bravo, kudos to you, you are turning it. Now, 
here's the thing is that so much of us, we want it so badly, right? We, we play this thing with ourselves where we, we really know that we want this better life. We really know that we deserve it and we really know that it's possible. Somehow, like the deep, dark core of us, beyond our wounds, beyond the stuff that we've been told, beyond the programming and the bullying and the bull that we've received, we know deep down inside we can get it. We want it, we want it, we want it, we want it! We want to be at 11. And yet, it kind of feels like it doesn't happen fast enough. And that tension of like, yeah, but, but, it's so uncomfortable to us sometimes that we decide, I don't want to live like that. I'd rather just live it too. Click. Phone. Car. Work. Bed. Right? Because it's that tension of really, 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 really going for what you want. Really being the kind of person you want to be. Really having the love that you want and deserve in your life. It's that tension of not yet getting it and shutting down to two is the thing that's causing the pain. So if we realize that if we just keep holding that and recognize that that tension, you guys feel that when I talk about it, right? Here's this what I want, what I want, what I want, what I am. If you recognize that that tension, it's always going to be there. It's just always going to be there. It's a part of life. It's a part of life. It's part of what's going to happen. Okay, great. Because then pretty soon what's going to happen is you're going to get your dream. You are. You're going to get it. If you hang in, if you hang in long enough and you start asking for help, the right way. Don't ask for help by the people. Yeah, let me rephrase. Absolutely ask for help around the people around you. Collaborate. I think collaboration is huge. But the one resource that will never, ever, 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 ever let you down, that will never flake out, that will never miss the call, that will never be on vacation, that will never die, is spirit. That's the one you can absolutely count on 100% of the time. So when you do that and you have that tension between what, what you want and what is, if you recognize that just always exists, it always exists, then you can kind of soften into it. You can soften into it and say, spirit, I know that that's, that tension is here. Help me to make that easier. So we're going to practice some of this right now. We're going to go into a meditation. <clears throat> so get comfortable. And again, one of the things that I think is important in spirit practice is the practice part. I want you to feel it. Because once you start feeling spirit, you start feeling spirit's love and support and guidance, wisdom and comfort, peace, ease, you can start tapping into it more regularly. You can tap into it at 3 o'clock in the morning. So just... First of all, as we start our journey together, just really, really, really arrive here completely. Your bodies have arrived, but I want you to imagine that you are pulling to you like a magnet all of the other parts of you. Pull to you any thoughts you have of somewhere else or something else. Bring it to you right now. Just bring it right into you. You can go to it afterwards. Bring in all those thoughts, maybe thoughts that you had or experiences you had earlier this morning. Bring them right to you and allow yourself to really be fully present here. And bring in your emotions. Bring in all of the emotions that you have experienced throughout the morning or last week or anything. Just bring it all to you now. And bring your higher self the one that doesn't have the name, the one that doesn't have the job, the one that doesn't have the body, bring in your perpetual, always present, higher self to you. <sighs> and let's do some cleansing breaths just to release any last tension in our bodies. <sighs> relax and 
just feel yourself sitting on the chair. Feel your base of your pelvis sitting on the chair. Feel your feet on the floor. Feel yourself at 4401 Upton Avenue South in Minneapolis. Feel yourself occupying this real estate. There is a little two-foot square that's yours right now. You are on it. And then with your next breath, we're going to let our breath be our guide as we move through this journey together. So breathe in and just imagine that your higher self, your spirit, is entering into your body more fully and it's starting to go down into all the parts of your lungs, the, the lower lobes of your lungs so it fills with air, that there's all your lungs just sort of, both of your lungs just getting energized. <sighs> Let them just expand a little bit and feel like there's energy and light and love going in. With each breath, you're going to let your shoulders relax even more, going away from your ears. Your arms are relaxed. They're like spaghetti arms, cooked spaghetti arms. Your chest is open. Your back is relaxed. Your shoulder blades are just resting down comfortably on your back. And with your next breath, you're going to let your breath travel all the way down into your pelvis, down to the very base of your pelvis, like filling up your pelvic floor, like it's a bowl. And just notice what you're starting to feel and see as you start to energize and engage with your full self. Are you avoiding any places? Are there any places that feel stiff or uncomfortable or that might be needing a little bit of extra love. Just give a little bit of extra attention to those places in your body that need it. We are mind, body, and spirit. Let's feed all three. Breathe in and let that energy travel down. Your higher self, your higher spirit, let it travel down into your legs, into your calves. Imagining that it's traveling down into your bones, your muscles, your nerves, blood vessels. Travel it all the way down, all the way down to your fingertips, through your arms into your fingertips, and all the way down through your feet, down through your toes. So you literally feel breath, life force, and energy throughout your entire body. You can imagine that your energy is completely equal to your body. That every little corner, every organ, every cell, and all of the spaces between the cells has this frequency of light. Let it circle around into your brain, too. Let it travel around into your gray matter, into all those little folds, those nooks, those crannies, those little places inside that are helping to run you, your computer. It's like it's you're defragging your computer with light. Send it all the way through your brain, all the way through into your ears and into your eyes, into your nasal cavity, into your mouth, into your throat. Just sending light, sending breath, sending spirit, sending energy, sending power, and sending love throughout your body. And let it travel beyond you. Let it travel into those two or three feet around you all around you like you're in a bubble, that if you could put your arms up, you could put your arms to the side, you could literally feel still you. You could still feel you and your energy beyond your body, all the way around, all the way down and all the way up. And in this place, what we are going to do is we are going to look at what is the one thing right now that we want to release. The one thing that is causing us pain, causing us discomfort, causing us fear, causing us worry. What is it? Feel it? See it it's so totally clearly in your mind. See it. And then do a scan of your body and see where it is. See all the places that it is. Maybe it's all in through you. Maybe it's permeating you, and that's okay because we can get rid of it. We can imagine. Again, remember, spirit begins with imagination and then grows from there. We can imagine that there is a crystal, a beautiful, perfect crystal, right in the core of us, in our hearts. 
that is absolutely divine. It holds no frequency of wound. It holds no frequency of judgment. It holds no frequency of darkness or smallness. It is divine. It is perfect. Imagine that it is a magnet that is pulling all of that gunk associated with that thing you want to release. It is pulling it inside. Letting that, see the color, see the, see the consistency, see the texture, see the location, feel all of those things within your body of where you are stuck. And let it pull and pull and pull and pull in until your body is absolutely luminescent. And when you feel like you're struggling with that, just take another big, deep, cleansing breath of spirit inside, inhaling it, and exhaling out your smallness, exhaling out your fear, exhaling out your doubt, exhaling out your separation. Because you can choose today to l release the thing that is holding you back as you are working in partnership with spirit. You feel the presence of spirit helping you clean, clean yourself up, clean your wound, clean your, your smallness. Let all that in to that magnet, to that crystal of perfection. And then just imagine that that crystal is just going to lower itself, lower itself, lower itself down your spine, all the way down until it leaves the base of your pelvis, it leaves your bubble of energy that you've energized, and it goes down into the basement of this building, it goes past the foundation of this building, it goes deep right underneath you, right underneath you, deep down into the earth, and it starts to go 5, 10, 10 15 feet, 100 feet, a, a mile, 5 miles, 10 miles, 100 miles, 1,000 miles, down, 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 of all of that gun. Of what, you, it, of what you believe is your, your weakness, your fear, your doubt, the thing you haven't gotten. Let that all the way down into the very core until it goes right down into the center of the earth, her heartbeat, into her heart, into the earth's heart. And you feel mine, and you feel the neighbor to your left, and you feel the neighbor to your right, and you feel every single person in this community, and you feel the other people beyond this community who are doing sacred work at the same time. You feel all of us there together, and then it's all the same stuff. It's all the same stuff. Each and every one of us has a different story, and each and every one of us is exactly the same. And when you send that energy down into the earth, it transmutes it from darkness to power, darkness to light, and it's actually feeding the earth. You can feel the earth responding positively to that powerful energy that you have sent down into it. And it is being used to create clean water and to use to create food and trees and beautiful, beautiful, beautiful animals. All into that. And it's as if you are a blank canvas now inside. You've moved that issue out of you. You've literally, imaginatively, vibrationally moved it out of you. And now comes the good part. Breathe in. And imagine that you are standing underneath a beautiful, beautiful waterfall of the perfect crystal clear water. Perfect temperature. And you stand right underneath that waterfall and that waterfall just starts to soften you and cleanse you and cover you with spirit's love. And it enters into your body and it begins to fill you up from the very tips of your toes and the tips of your fingertips. It begins to fill you up with this perfect energy of trust and peace. Filling you up, reminding you that it is here for you and here with you at every given moment. 
It cools you down. It stamps the flames of fear right out of you and absolutely fills you up. Breathe in and feel your energetic roots. Let's feel that earth underneath you that has supported you and helped you so much as you feel that perfect integration of who you are, which is earth and spirit, organic and etheric. That's you. You feel that intermingling of your earth-based way and your spirit. And just be in your heart, feel your heart, and with the most humble and integrous request, just in your heart, ask spirit, help. I can't do this alone. Help me with the right guidance, the right decision, the right inspired action to take the right healing, just humbly ask spirit for help and start seeing what comes. And while you are in this sacred frequency, keep your eyes closed and just imagine, imagine the resolution to this issue that you have. And you don't have to get specific. You don't have to know faces or names or dates or locations. But you can imagine you walking through the rest of today and tomorrow, and this week, and this month. You can see yourself going through time and getting closer and closer and closer to the realization of this. Because as you sit here in integration with your divine self, you are placing the order. It is already happening. Spirit is orchestrating. See it in your mind's eye, starting to unfold in front of you joyfully, easily, effortlessly. See it start to go door open, door open, door open, door open, door open, door open. And then when you're sitting here in your heart and you just feel such gratitude, gratitude for this experience, gratitude for this omnipresent source of love that is there in radical support of you, gratitude for the life that you have had and the life that you continue to live, gratitude for the lessons that you have experienced, the pain that you have felt, because it has taught you about life and taught you about what is important and shown you what you want and shown you what you don't want. Gratitude for living fully and completely in this life. And you are at peace. And before we close this sacred space, allow one tiny strand of that silver strand of spirit that is flowing down into you 
through, always, always flowing down into you and you always connected to the earth. Let that continue to be present as you move more into consciousness, as you walk in this world. Let that connection of spirit, integration into the earth always be there, never stopping, knowing that it is going to continue to feed your vision of a happy, fulfilled, service-oriented life. Breathe in. A couple more breaths of gratitude. beautiful objects that are stand, sitting in front of me have all received that yummy, yummy juju. And you can use it beyond today. <sighs> so when you are ready, you can open your eyes and kind of move your hands and your feet. And those of you that have sacred objects, I invite you to pick them up.